Good morning, everybody. This is Richard back at you. We're excited today. We got Miss Teresa on the camera. We got Annie hanging out. And I finally got to do something different than transmissions. Woo! I think it was a good thing. But anyway, you know, after 40 years of building trannies, it's the same thing over and over. This style, this style, this style. And let me tell you, it does get uh, a little overwhelming sometimes. Monotonous. Monotonous, over yes. and over and over. But I still enjoy it. So I decided to take on another job. Woo! Boy, did I go over my head on this one. But anyway, I said that word, Teresa. I know, stop that. Okay, I will. But anyway, <laughs> I took out another job that I didn't really want to do, but the people that we did it for are really awesome people, so I decided to take on this job. He started it, and he shouldn't have started it. So I took over <laughs> to finish it. So it was a train wreck. Something I don't ever do, never have done, and uh, believe me, two days on each door. So this is what I did, guys. I didn't do a tranny, I did a door. <laughs> but what I decided to do for Marlon was help him out on changing all of his door molding, window molding, the mechanism inside, the electric motor, all the trough felt, everything like that. I did both doors. This door uh, was about two days to do, to take the window out, change all the felt, the molding, take the wing window out, change all the rubber around it. Because uh, on that, that type of stuff, you physically have to drill the rivets out, take the assembly totally apart, put the rubber in, pop rivet all the framing back together, and put the window in, and then get all your, your felt, your uh, electric motor. You can see here, Teresa, if you want to show them what I did. Actually, we ended up doing a flywheel on the truck and uh, a new starter. You can see the starter here. Knocked a couple of teeth off of it. So uh, that's what we ended up doing there. But you can see we replaced both door mechanisms, both door motors, all the felt, all the rubber. We got new door panels here now, waiting on uh, the installation kit to come in to install the new door panels. But once I, I got everything in, uh, we did the passenger side too. Once we got everything in, the windows still, they struggled going up and down. Uh, the tracks were tight, I guess. Uh, so before we even started the job, somebody tried to uh, get more power going to the motor. So they, what they did, they sell a relay kit uh, to actually uh, run power directly from the batteries uh, and to run the relays to run the motors. Now this truck did not come out with electric windows. So the, I don't even think it come out with these doors. I really don't know. Uh, it doesn't have a fuse for the uh, electric windows or anything like that. But it does have the rubber going through the doors to run the wiring and stuff like that. So they did run the ground from the battery, the power wire from the battery, all the way to the, to the relays. And now what you do is you have your switch uh, turning the relays on to run the motors instead of the drawing the power through the switch. Because this switch, even after everything was done, this switch would get hot from just trying to roll the windows up and down. That's really good. Wow, that not a day lot difference. better. Not that no difference. I mean, Definitely. I've seen it where it was crawling. It was struggling. Now this door here, the motor was uh, left, got loose, and they didn't ever fix it. So I had to come in here and weld some washers in here and get the motor mounted into the right spot. And I just basically took measurements off of that passenger side door to get my locations because there's actually two studs on the, the motor bracket and two bolts that go through the bottom. So you really have to get it dead on to even get the studs through the hole. So it was a big job. But uh, once I got it in, they were still struggling to go up and down. Now the uh, LMC trucks, I think, is where they got this kit from. They do come with a lubricant to put the felt in the tracks and to put this rubber molding around the wing window here. Because let me tell you, to get this in here was a train wreck without this brush on lubrication. Once I've got that working, my thumbs are hurting really bad still from working it around in there. But once I got it going, 
the windows were still struggling to go up and down. So the next thing I bought was this blaster silicate lubricant. And let me tell you, this right here did the trick. Once I got uh, the windows rolled down, I sprayed the felt really good with this lubricant up and down in the track here, here, everywhere I could put it. And next thing you know, these windows started going up and down like brand new. So this really saved us a lot right here. We were worried about uh, bigger batteries, bigger alternators and stuff like that. But this truck did not come out with electric windows or any accessories like that. So we are putting a bigger battery in it and we are going with a 200 amp alternator and getting rid of the 63 amp alternator because th that alternator will barely run the headlights. Now you gotta remember, the battery starts it, once it gets running, the alternator takes over and runs the vehicle, all the accessories going down the highway. The battery is just over there taking a, a slight charge that it's ready to when you turn the vehicle off again and it starts it. Right, Teresa? That's right. how that works. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, like I said, he's got a really tiny battery in it that you can almost just feels like plastic, nothing in it. So it's really too lightweight for me, to, even for the vehicle itself. So we are upgrading the battery, the alternator, to help this window situation. We're, I know Marlon's going to be adding speakers and a little bit of amp maybe that he needs the power anyway. Sure. So, but you, like you, Teresa showed you here, that was a lot of work to do. I got two days in the first door, the second door probably a day and a half because like I said, there's just so much you have to do. Uh, to these doors to get them to work. I'm telling you, I think they had problems with these doors to start with uh, when they were factory. Now we did put all new rubber around here too. So the door is going to have to stay closed for a little bit. Uh, but it is closing even better now. Before I was having to slam it a little bit harder. But once it gets all the molding smashed down or uh, to where it's going to be normal. Uh, what's that word I want to use? Um, um, formed. Formed, I guess you could say. Yeah, once it gets say. formed, uh, the door is going to slowly start closing but, better and, and better. And it's going to do that because remember, they live where it doesn't get that cold, and it's getting cold here. Yes, it's freezing outside now. So, but anyway, we just kind of wanted to show you what I got myself into. I have no more ears left on the side of my head. They were chewed off. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never do this again. This is a job that I would only do for myself. But being that it was Marlins, I, you know, I, I went ahead and did it for Marlins. He's a really good guy. Like I said, we put a brand new motor in this truck. We put an overdrive transmission in this truck. We, we, we changed the gearing in this truck. And this, believe it or not, this thing will go down the highway just like a normal vehicle. Now, it's totally different. Kind of like Lisa's Firebird. We did it. New motor, new overdrive transmission, new rearing gears. Now they can cruise 70, 80 miles an hour down the highway and just and hang out with the rest of us speeding. Yeah. Well, I want to tell Marlin. <laughs> Happy birthday. I know it's not until the 10th, but happy birthday. How old is Marlon? 86, 87? 72. Oh, man, Holy I was well. I'm thinking of my mom. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're going to, he's going to slap you around next he's time. He's going to get a hold of me you. now when he That's comes to fix the truck yeah. up. That's terrible, yeah. Ooh, <laughs> you in trouble. But anyway, this is what I've been doing for the last week. Uh, we got new door panels to put on it. We're waiting on the accessories to mount the new door panels, and then we'll be done with the truck. And then we're going to get back on to business. There we go again. So the next video is going to be on this 350 that uh, come in. Uh, we're going to be going through it. Uh, something's in the pan. I, I haven't looked in the pan. The customer left it in there. So we'll kind of see what we got going on there. So. But what we're going to do is show you the process of some of the work that he did, that he videoed. Yes. <laughs> I won't be in the video because I'm actually taking the video, yeah. but still the process it takes to do one of these doors. Once you figure out one of them, the second one's not as hard, maybe. I was fixing to say. They're both hard. Wrong. They are hard. My yeah. thumbs hurt, believe me, from trying to work that molding in there. What I used is this hook right here that I take snap rings out. You can see that little hook? That was the best thing to get in there and work that rubber into the tracks and stuff, so it worked out really good. Yeah. Okay, we ended up getting everything out of the door. We got all the uh, rubber seal out of here. All the way, this is actually where your wing window goes. You pull your felt off of here, you can see where it locks in there. There's our port window. 
There's our main window, and this is the stuff I was talking about. Okay. All of it's just like that. That's your molding that your window slides up and down. It should be really soft, felty rubber. So next is to take this over to the table over here where I got everything laid out and um, get me a towel laid over here so I don't scratch the window. Be careful with it, but get everything cleaned up again from my other one. And then um, we'll get this out. We have to uh, cut those two rivets out. We have to put some PB blaster on here and try to get this loose because last time this was gonna break off and this cannot break off because we physically got to move the port window uh, out of the frame so we can get the rubber in and then stick the, uh, this here has to go through that hole in the center right there. See that hole? So this basically sets in there like that. So you can't put the rubber in there uh, without removing the window, put the rubber in. Then you have uh, this piece right here uh, we have to, um, on this side of the window, this piece right here, we'll have to grind. Once we get this out, there's some rivets behind that felt there. And then we will have to remove this piece here. And then you can see the spots there where it goes in there like this, I believe. I have to look at it closely. And then we'll pop, get that piece in first. Get this in there, pop rivet this in, put the port window back in, uh, and then basically we're done with that part. And then we have uh, edge trim uh, felt that goes for the windows on both sides. And then we have this main piece here. Now physically is uh, the felt uh, that the door, or excuse me, the window uh, slides around. This is the window felt here that you have to assemble in there too at the same time. And then you got this uh, pieces here. That will be the door seal around the whole door when I get done with the windows and stuff like that. So wish me luck. <laughs>
Okay, we ended up getting everything out of the door. We got all the uh, rubber seal out of here. All the way, this is actually where your wing window goes. You pull your felt off of here, you can see where it locks in there. There's our port window. There's our main window. And this is the stuff I was talking about. Okay. All of it's just like that. That's your molding that your window slides up and down. It should be really soft, felty rubber. So next is to take this over to the table over here where I got everything laid out and um, get me a towel laid over here so I don't scratch the window. Be careful with it, but get everything cleaned up again for my other one. And then um, we'll get this out. We have to uh, cut those two rivets out. We have to put some PB blaster on here and try to get this loose because last time this was going to break off and this cannot break off because we physically got to move the port window uh, out of the frame so we can get the rubber in and then stick the, uh, this here has to go through that hole in the center right there. See that hole? So this basically sets in there like that. So you can't put the rubber in there uh, without removing the window, put the rubber in. Then you have uh, this piece right here. Uh, we have to, um, on this side of the window, this piece right here, we'll have to grind. Once we get this out, there's some rivets behind that felt there. And then we will have to remove this piece here. And then you can see the spots there where it goes in there like this, I believe I have to look at it closely. And then we'll pop, get that piece in first, get this in there, pop this in, put the port window back in. Uh, and then basically we're done with that part. And then we have uh, edge trim uh, felt that goes for the windows on both sides. And then we have this main piece here. Now physically is uh, the felt uh, that the door or excuse me, the window uh, slides around. This is the window felt here that you have to assemble in there too at the same time. And then you got this uh, pieces here. That will be the door seal around the whole door when I get done with the windows and stuff like that. So wish me luck. <laughs> okay, I don't remember which way the switch goes, but I, let's see what happens. Why is it moved? Already clicking. My relay clicking. Down. We want to thank you, Miss Teresa, for recording. Don't be smiling over there. Look at Annie. You still hanging out with this girl? She's excited too. Well, anyway, stay tuned. We have another one coming. Be back shortly. Have a great day.